guess we're using all the energy right All now. right. Les Brown. Come on, you're ready. Les Brown. This is my camera here. One. Go ahead. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Hello, my name is Les Brown, and today we have a special topic that we're going to be talking about, and we have with us Kenya. Kenya, first of all, it's a pleasure to be with you. Likewise. Thank and you. and I'm, I'm, I'm really interested in, in this conversation that we'll have, because there's somebody that's retarded in the room here. <laughs> <laughs> she always, I just call for her. We were just saying earlier, always got something. Why don't you walk us over there and you can see the work? I didn't make no noise at all. Yeah, OK. Les Brown. You saved that blooper, all right? OK, 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 quiet on the set. Les Brown, take two. You have something special. You have greatness in you. My special guest today is Kenyel Kilgore, and we're going to be talking about something that's on the mind of everybody, uh, particularly if you're a driver, and particularly if you're African American. And it is how to, if you have an encounter with a police officer, if you stop for a ticket or uh, some type of violation, what do you do? How is it that you are to conduct yourself? Now that's major in the African American community. We represent only 6% of the population, but 40% of the people that are killed by police officers who are unarmed, unarmed African Americans are killed, 40% by trigger happy cops who know they have absolute power. The judge is on their side, the juries are on this side, and the prosecutors, the prosecuting attorney is on their side, and they present the case in a way that guarantees that the defendant, the victim, will always lose. I'm going to start it again. Am I too controversial when I'm doing this? Trigger happy cops. I, I, you know, I'm like, <laughs> OK, just, 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 just remember, you won't I, I, no have cop, to, uh, I have to go back to the state of Texas. <laughs> yeah, OK, so yeah. <laughs> Don't you want it to be where the, the um, uh, police officers can even take a look at it? Well, yeah, yeah. got it, got it. Okay, got it. thank you. So, yeah, I'm gonna do it. I, the the militant less problem. <laughs> less militant, less. Yeah, I got, I got, I got to bring this out. He's at the courthouse. Yeah. yeah. I mean, if I have to play devil's advocate, no, I'm not sure. That's, 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 that, that, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna, not gonna bring it right. Now, am I? Yeah. Am I? Am I to speak from the both sides though? Because you're going to, yeah. Okay. Don't worry. Just follow the floor. Yeah. Just do what you do. Why can't I go it. with it? Take Les Brown. Take two. You have something special. You have greatness within you. Hello, my name is Les Brown. Today I'm doing a special interview with Kenyel Kilgore, and we're going to talk today about what to do if you're stopped by a police officer. My brother-in-law was a police officer for over three decades, and every day, my sister and our family, we wondered and we prayed whether or not he would be coming back home. Because every day when he left the house, he was putting his life on the line. That was his duty. And we've had some incidents and people being killed by police, and the numbers speak for themselves. Represented, uh, African Americans represent 6% of the population, but 40% of the people that are killed by police, and these are individuals who had no weapons whatsoever. So what we're looking for are some answers of what can be done to help the people who are stopped, the civilians, what is it that they can do to be in a mindset that can literally save their lives. And you have been in a position of dealing with law enforcement. You've had some experience in law enforcement. Correct. Tell us about that experience. Well, my actual law enforcement experience itself is I actually did pass through the Gus George Law Enforcement Academy Class of 32, which is the Texas Basic Peace Officer Certification course. So while I never actually worked in the field as a cop, I am fully certified in the state of Texas to do such. So you have some experience on what are the things that 
police officers are going to do when they stop someone, and Correct. you can also talk about it from the civilian Correct. perspective Correct. when they're stopped that can perhaps save their lives. Exactly. You know, the, the biggest thing is you have to remember, point blank period, no planning will lead you to eventually losing your life. Why? Because it's preliminary steps before you ever leave the house that you want to make sure that you have already taken care of before you get in the vehicle and even potentially give an officer an opportunity to come on you in a way that may just cost you your life. Thing number one, for instance, if you know for a fact you've been drinking or smoking, either way they're both illegal to do while driving, by law you're giving an officer reason to now get you out of your vehicle. The name of the game is get in the car. They're going to see you driving. They may see you swerve. They may see a broken tail. Like anything, they now have reasonable suspicion to come up to the vehicle. Once they're at the vehicle, they smell alcohol. If they smell what's been marijuana or any other drug that it may be, they now have probable cause to search your vehicle. All these things put them in a heightened sense of alertness, which also further causes them, in some cases, to get trigger happy. So it's... It's common sense not to get behind the wheel if you've been doing drugs or drinking alcohol, but common sense is not common practice. Common sense is People not common practice. People do it practice. every day. But what is, what's the next thing? You said how you prepare yourself before you leave the house to get behind the car. What else is important? Well, think about it. Always assume the worst, but hope for the best. I'm going to get pulled over. If I'm assuming that, what do I need to do to make sure that I can be as efficient as possible when I do actually encounter law enforcement? For instance, my license. I know they're going to ask for my license. Why would I want to fumble around with my license? Have your license in a position to where it can be easily accessible. Honestly, within three to five seconds, you should be able to expose any document needed. What other document will you need? They're going to ask you for your insurance. If it's on your phone, you can pull up the app while he's approaching your vehicle. If it's in a glove box, make sure you have nothing else on top of it so you don't have to fumble around. You can reach it easily. When the officer is approaching, depending on what the terrain setup may be, if it's on a busy highway, I myself am not going to try to approach you from the side of traffic. So you may have someone approach you on the other side. Look in your mirror, still be alert. Never become so complacent to where you feel everything around you is going to be 100% okay. He may come to your driver's side. He may come to your passenger side. Either way, a quick movement by you could also end your life because you didn't see him, now he's alerted to the fact that I'm alarmed. Your alarm reaction may just be something that he's seen in his prior training that put him in risk of his life. And, and cops know that all they have to say is, I fear for my life. I fear for my life, and nine times out of 10, they get off. Let me ask you, so when the cop asks you for your driver's license. Tell me about how a person should conduct themselves in terms of the interaction, the personality. Because many times people are hostile. <laughs> Why you stop me? We'll talk with that. You know, the honest truth is the very first thing you must come to terms with in that very moment, you have now lost all power. Not in the sense that you're powerless, but you have to be willing to relinquish some power in that And you moment. lost power to somebody that's got a gun you know, and backup. 100%. Everything is set up for them to do their job. Nothing comes before a mission. Objectives are there for a reason. In the military, they teach us all day. We're very objective driven. Law enforcement is paramilitary. Their objective is to now do their due diligence and research and investigation. If they're coming to the vehicle and they tell me now, that I have everything in place. My license can be exposed within three to five seconds. My insurance, what am I doing now? Because this is where it gets tricky. First and foremost, you can see my hands at all times, whether they're on the steering wheel, whether I just have them up, whether you can just see them like palms facing upward. Why? We have thumbs. We're superior beings because we have thumbs. We can grab because we have thumbs. If you can see my thumb or you can see my palm, what threat am I truly to you in that moment, right then and there? Okay, so you're saying that a person should have their hands open like this, or on the stern wheel, or have their thumbs up so that the cop can see them. Correct. That's just that's going to be thing one. Once you shift that mindset of, you know, I have to relinquish power. Once you're, this is you. I don't. I don't. I'm not really a religious person, but I am spiritual and I have understood the principles. 
people who are in church, they relinquish their power to the Lord by praying with their hands. You have submission. to release, release your power, relinquish your power to the cops before then, they send you to the Lord. In that, in that very moment. <laughs> okay, in that very in moment. In that very moment. That's essentially where we are. they have no problem to do with that. Know, so it's one, of those, it's one of those things where you, honestly, the mindset of humbling yourself to be able to honestly allow someone to just do what is simply a job. Five to ten minutes and you're on your way. But you will allow five to ten minutes to determine your life. Within that five to ten minute span, he's going to ask you a few questions. How are you going to respond to him when he asks you those questions? You now have to be there for five to ten minutes. He has every right to now be and there. And then they run your, your tag. They can they run, run your tag. Your license. And, they can run your tag and everything else. Can it be longer than that? Yes. Can it be shorter? Yes. But expect five to ten minutes. In this five to ten minute span, when did you want this to be the most pleasant of an unpleasant situation? Absolutely. So you're saying if I have a belligerent personality, you know, if I'm combative. Humble yourself. That it could, it could cost me to go to jail. It can cost you your life. Jail is, jail is honestly, at times, a much preferred alternative when dealing with law enforcement. Why? Because we see the numbers. Your life can be taken. Your life is really that valuable. But are you willing to say it's that valuable by not necessarily acting the part of yourself? So a person need to, because when you get pulled over by a police officer, you're nervous. Correct. You wonder what it's about. Correct. And sometimes they don't get out of the car immediately. Correct. So that gives you time to get your license and your insurance and put them on the dashboard. 100%. So it's visible 100%. for the police officer. But taking some deep breath and just calm down, calm yourself, exactly. so that you can have an even kill conversation. Correct. This is where the science comes into it. You have your actual new, your systems in your body where you have your PNS and your SNS. These are your fight or flight responses. Mm -hmm. What's Every, PNS? What's that? Get back to me in 5.2 seconds, I will actually have the defined definition. <laughs> okay. Hey. Okay, thank you very much. All right. We will figure that out. Okay. Okay, so so so, so I, I one of the first thing that a person should do is de-escalate yourself. Take some deep breath and calm yourself rather than escalating the situation. By Correct. engaging in an argument with an officer, I wasn't speeding or Correct. what's your, what are you, why are you stopping me? Correct. Because they're on edge. Your basic you're psychological edge. makeup itself is naturally going to put the body into hyper mode in that very state. Your blood is racing, so now you have thoughts that are racing. You're starting to lose sensation in your fingers and everything else. Why? Because you once again, this fight or flight syndrome is fully in place and it's just running through your body. You now, in a matter of frames, not even full of seconds. You have to figure out what's my next move. And if I'm not already accustomed to the pressures of either someone walking up to me or training my body muscle memory in the event that this does happen, this is where we see one too many scenarios of even something that may be legitimate in the case of an individual having a firearm permit on them. While having a firearm, officer says, get your license. Well, you start fidgeting around and you tell me you have a gun on you. This is right in that same mindset of let's go ahead and get this fully together. Let's get a training in place. Let's get the body moving back to back in repetitive motion. So therefore we know under these stresses, we can actually do this. So what do you look at the demographics of the people that you want to work with? You know, what's the age category? Ideally, every person who gets in a vehicle, period, should know this. But from ages 14 to 24, your high school to your college age students, that's the primary focus group because of the simple fact that they have the most influence and drive going forward to also spearhead anything in the future for the next generation without there being such a disconnect. So you want people to reach out to you from who have students in schools, Correct. 14 up to 24, Correct. high schools and colleges, Correct. and you're going to teach them the behaviors and the things that's necessary and how to conduct themselves in the event that they're stopped by a police officer 
and the things that you're going to teach them can literally save their lives. One hundred percent. I. This isn't something that I'm just saying because I've been through the training. It's something that I personally had to apply to my life. And me knowing that I myself, while going back home to bury my grandmother, could easily have lost my life. In a matter of 96 hours, I was pulled over five times. I received four tickets in that period. Each time I had my firearms on me. I keep a 40 caliber on my waist. I had a 38 caliber in my glove box and I had an AR-15 in the trunk. I was pulled out my vehicle every time by officers on the side of the highway. Why? They say I was speeding in some cases. They say the vehicle smelled like marijuana. And they say I have suspicious activity going on because I have weapons placed in a vehicle. I was coming from a speaking conference. No malicious intent whatsoever had nothing on me. But because I was driving through certain states, I'm not going to put their names out there because it isn't about the region. It's about the mindset and the mentality that we as a nation share right now. I was able to walk away. Everyone's not as lucky. Well, here's what we know. Even if you do everything that Kenyo says, you can still be killed by officers, and we've seen that. But you have a, a chance, you have a greater percentage of, of living, your child or you, by following up and reaching out to him to come speak to your group, to your church, to your college. He's a young man who has a, a tremendous experience in this area, and I highly recommend him. His name is Kenyel Kilgore, and the number is on the screen and how you can reach out to him I can say to you that you have something special, you've got greatness in you, and your life has value. Learn the tools that you need to learn, so if you stop by an officer, that you'll be able to live through that experience. This has been Mrs. Mamie Brown's Baby Boy. It's been a plump, pleasing pleasure, as well as a privilege. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, you do a good job on that. Yeah, you did a great job. I want you to put the camera on me. Uh, where's my daughter? I want to do this Inspire commercial. Okay. And then we'll go, come on, Monica, get ready. Still, still a little. <coughs> no, you came up now. Say, uh, he has to leave, but he wants to take a picture with you. Oh, absolutely. It'd be my pleasure. Let me know what I need to do. And let me. Do you have your phone with you or something? You got to use your phone? Yeah, use my phone. Also, I want to tell you about uh, what I say. He's also oh, an inspired brand. motivational speaker. Too. Exactly. Stay, right? Stay exactly. in route. There's his what is the word? Stay in route. We represent perseverance and that, that space between start and finish. Mm. So you got to have a conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes, sir. Got my arms around greatness here. There Fantastic. You we got to talk. You're you going to be interviewing me one day, man. Okay. There you go. Let's right. make that happen. I live right. here now. Yes, yes, sir. All right, Rob. We'll see you next shot. Okay. Definitely a like what? Yes, sir. Thank you. Remember those tips we just gave you can save your life. Right. <laughs> right. right. Yeah. That, that's, that's just the basis just to get them intrigued. Mm -hmm. The real tips. I think we did it, don't you think? Yo, very good. It took it took it took half my day rest, but it was great. <laughs> <laughs> last that last part is what the impactful part is. Never tell a story without making a point, and never make a point without telling a story. Yeah. Right. So right. the story came at the very end, though, unfortunately. That no, no that's point. good. You yeah, had it good. in there. I mean, you brought it. That that well, that, that brought it all into one. Correct. It, it wrapped it up. You should say. Correct. You know, that's a great story. Correct. Mm -hmm. And you know what I was thinking while you were saying that? I said the reason those cops stopped you because they knew you had a CC, yeah. you know, yeah. concealed weapon permit. Mm -hmm. And I've heard stories where they literally stopped you because you got a. Carry how do they know? How can they know? On your plate. What? Mm -hmm. The plate tells you you got a permit. Mm -hmm. Your so plate says you got a gun permit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. That's necessary. They track. They can track it back to the vehicle or the owner itself because of the simple fact that they're making a traffic stop. I need to have as much intel on who I'm dealing with as possible. And so if, if I get a license to carry a gun, 
I have I will get a sticker to put on my no, license. It's not, it's not a sticker, it's just this is essentially built in. Like it, it could be built right into it. The same way they run your license plate, they see your address because your license is tied into it. Well, if you have a license in that same state as far as a firearm license, they share the same database, why not? They're so trying, they're trying to make it now to where you can almost literally Robocop is real deal application in today's policing environment. They want to be so technologically advanced in every way, shape, or form that they can essentially have a picture of you come up on the screen. From your license. From, right? your, from your license. Just run your license plate because it's registered back. So therefore, there's no confusion of having to read paper and papers. You can just snap decisions. You Baby, you're supposed to text me over the information so I'll do the spot. I'm in the studio. I know you're supposed to text me the information that I can do the commercial for 